I've showed you how to make custom menus in Marlin in the past, but you can also make animated ones. Hey everybody, Chris here. Last week I announced that I'm partnering up with Printed Solid to give away 100 spools of Jesse PLA filament if you enter our contests. And one of those contests is firmware related. Now you can use any firmware you want, we just want to see you do something cool that maybe the printer isn't supposed to do, or it doesn't really help your print quality, it's just kind of a neat trick. One of those things that I like to do are animated custom boot screens, and they're pretty easy to make in Marlin. So I thought I'd give you some ideas, we'd start here, and I'd show you how to make one of these custom screens. Of course, you don't have to enter a custom screen for the contest, you can do anything you want, but maybe this will get some ideas going. So let's get to it, I'll show you how to get everything set up. So custom boot screens are actually pretty easy to make. You can pretty much take any software, build a BMP, and then load it to your configuration. Animated ones are just a little bit trickier. But Marlin firmware has a lot of great information if you want to build one if you're using Marlin. For today, I am assuming that you have a Marlin configuration that works. We're just going to go over the steps of Marlin on how to animate one of these screens. But I'll show you how to get started. So the first thing that I suggest you do is head over to the Marlin GitHub. Now, if you want to update your existing configuration of Marlin, make sure you're using the same version that you're going to pull from the GitHub. It might be a great time to upgrade to the newest version, but they're going to have to match. But by far the easiest way to get started to get the information to set up an animated screen is just to use the example. So from the GitHub, just go to config and click on this link right here and it's going to download the example zip file. And when you extract all of the configuration examples, head into the parent directory, go into config, examples, and there's going to be one in here called animation example. That's the one you want to start with. So we'll go in here, and let's just open up this boot screen example in a file editor. I use Notepad++. In here is where you're going to configure your animated boot screen. Basically, we need to create a set of frames that it can display in order, simulating an animation. But inside the example, it's going to give you this link where you can head over to the converter tool. And that takes us here. It still has support for the one dot versions of Marlin and two dot. And there's a couple of things you can use this converter for. We're going to use it for a boot screen, but you can also use it as a status screen. And it will just convert your bitmap to a language that you can use for other purposes. But now we need to create our screens. Again, you can do this in any program that will handle a BMP file, a bitmap. But if you're using Windows, every version of Windows has Paint. If you're making a simple graphic, Paint is probably the easiest thing to use. You can't get super carried away here because it is just a small screen. But get creative as you want. Whatever tool will create a BMP should be just fine. If you'd like to convert another image into a BMP, I recommend that you use Inkscape. Inkscape is a free download that you can use to help you convert images over to different types of images. I use it a lot to convert JPEG or PNG over to BMP. I'll leave a link in the description on how you do that. There's some great videos out there. And also a video that I did before just for a custom screen, a non-animated one. But today we're gonna keep it simple and we're just gonna go with paint. Before we do that, let's talk about the screen type just a little bit. Now for printers using LCD style screens, there's still a lot of them out there. It's still a pretty common thing to see on a printer. I know a lot of us have gone to touch screens, but these are still around. The two main ones that you're going to see is what we call the riprap discount display, or the 2004, as I like to call it, 20 rows across, four down, or the riprap full graphics LCD display or the 128 by 64. The full graphics display is the only one in Marlin that is going to support the custom boot screen that we're going to create today. So if you have a 2004, you're going to have to upgrade to something like this. Now on touch screens and things like that, there's different methods to create custom graphics. That's way more in depth than what we're going to talk about today. But if you have one of these 128 64s, you're going to be in good shape. 
And that's what we're going to use for this video. So back to paint. Now, what we have to do is create single frames for our animation. And you can create as many as you wish. You can make that animation very complicated. But all we're doing is either turning the pixel on, which will be a dark color, or leave it transparent, so it'll be off. And that's what that Marlin tool is going to help us do, that converter. So we just need to create a bunch of frames to make our animation. We're going to keep it very simple, but let's get paint set up so that it will support that 128 by 64 resolution. We're going to go to File, Properties, and we're going to change our width and height. Width, 128 pixels, height, 64. And we'll hit OK. Make sure it says pixels up here. Now we have a canvas that will keep us isolated inside the screen that we're going to be using. And so it's easier to work with. We're just going to zoom in. Now we can start building our animation. And again, we're going to create this frame by frame, because that's all it's going to do is play these one after another. So let's just make a Chris's Basement logo. We'll have a guy that falls down the stairs. And then we can control the order that those frames appear in. So let's start by just grabbing the line tool up here, get whatever size line you'd like, and I'm just going to try to draw a staircase. And we'll take it line by line. I'm just going to kind of guess on where it goes, but then keep building up until I'm happy with where it's laid out inside our canvas here. And I like that. So now we want to save that as frame one, so we can build off of this frame. So go to File, Save As, make sure you have BMP bitmap selected down here, and we can just call it one or frame one, and we'll save it. Next, let's add some text in here. I'll just go to the text tool, and then click down here roughly where I want it, and then we can change it up. I'm gonna switch to impact font, that's just one that I like. I'll leave it at 11, because you can kind of stretch it as you wish. And let's just put Chris's up here in the corner. We'll adjust our box size. And then while it's still live, you can move it around. So let's just set it up here. That looks good. So now we have frame two. Let's go file, save as, frame two. How about some more text? Let's put basement down here. Adjust the size, and right there looks good. Remember, once you click out, it's not active anymore. Undo in Paint is your friend. You can also do all of this in Paint 3D, whatever tool works best. So that looks pretty good. Let's call that Frame 3. Now I want to make a little guy that's going to fall down this staircase. Now when I do stuff like this, I like to make the drawing out in space because I'm going to make several frames and I want to move it around as a selection. So let's just grab a circle here. We'll give him a head. We'll switch to the line tool. I'm going to use a little thinner line than I did for the staircase to make his body. And we'll give him some arms and some legs. And we can touch him up a bit, but let's select him. And we want to appear that he's falling down the stairs, so let's go to rotate and do 180 degrees. Let's put him on his head. So there, touched him up a little bit. But now he's out here and we can just grab him and move him around. So we'll select him, now he's movable. Let's start him at the top of the staircase here. We'll rotate him 90 degrees and let's set him up here somewhere. Because he's already falling as he comes into screen. And it's going to overlay your other text, but as it puts it on the LCD, it really doesn't look all that bad. Besides, he's supposed to be falling in front of this logo anyway, right? So let's leave him there, that looks pretty good. And let's save as, and let's save him as frame four. Now a trick that I like to do in paint, because it's hard to work with, because these are all laid over. From here, I'm just gonna hit undo, this back arrow up here. That'll put him back into position. I can select him again, and move him into the second position. So this time, let's flip him all the way around. 
and let's put him about right there. And we'll save as frame 5. Again, same thing, undo, grab him again, move his position, we'll save this one as frame 6, and then one more time, again with the undo, we'll flip him around, we'll have him landing on his head. That seems fitting for falling down the stairs. And we'll call this one frame 7. So now we have all the frames in BMP format for our animation. Now we need to go back to the converter tool and get them ready to go into our example file. So for the boot animation, here's the converter tool. We are using Marlin 2.0. We're going to leave that as a binary because it is pretty much just on and off. And then it defaults to bitmap, but we're going to use it as boot screen. This is what frames up the code to get it to go back into our configuration file. And then let's just start bringing in our frames. Let's choose file, frame one. It shows you what it's going to look like on the screen. And here's all the code that you need for your configuration file. So just click down here. It's going to highlight everything. You can right click and copy. Now we're going to go back to our example animation. The example has a few frames. Let's just start at the top. I'm just going to select everything underneath this constant and hit paste. Now it's going to put a bunch of stuff in here that you don't need at the top, but you can see kind of how it's used the ones and zeros to put in your animation. Those are the pixels that are going to be turned on. Then that existing constant line, this unassigned character up here, I'm just going to take everything out from what I pasted and put it right back to how the example was. And then we're going to go back and get our second frame. We'll put it right here. You can see these are labeled. So we've got BMP, BMP1, BMP2, and so on. You can just keep adding these for your animation. I'll show you how it reads these in in a moment. But let's go ahead and do a couple more of these while we're here. Go back to the converter tool. We'll choose our next file, frame two. Click down here. We'll copy it back to our example. I'm just going to take everything out underneath this line and paste. Again, I'll take out everything above from what I pasted. I'm going to keep the line that is in the example just to keep me organized because it does say BMP1. And let's do one more while we're here. You're going to have to put all of the frames that you want in this file. Back to the converter. Third frame. Copy. Paste it in your config file. And then clean it up. And put as many frames in here as you need to. So I'm going to go ahead and add all the rest of my frames. So all my frames are in my file. I have seven in total. Let's go back to the top of this config because there's a few more things we need to talk about. You can do this a couple of ways. You can time each frame, which is what I like to do, so that I can select how long each one are on the screen. Or you can do the same for all frames. That's how it is by default. You can also select custom boot screen timeout that's how much time it has after the animation displays. I think 500 milliseconds actually works pretty well. So we'll leave that. I'm going to comment out the frame time. Just put two slashes in front of that and take the slashes off of animated frame time. This can be set below. You also need to set your width. By default, it's 120. These screens are 128. So make sure that's set to the correct width resolution. And now since we set frame time, let's scroll down to the bottom of this file. And here's where you set frame time. You can see this if statement. If it's uncommented frame time, it's going to use these parameters. If not, it's just going to show them in the order down here. So whichever one you want to do. But now I can make things longer or shorter just to make it look a little bit better. And I can select which frames are shown first. Now remember, I told you that this file starts with BMP, then moves to BMP1, then 2, then 3, and so on. So we did a pretty good job putting ours in order. So we want BMP to show first, so I'm going to select that one. And let's have it show for a second. These are all milliseconds. And then we'll move to BMP1. Let's have it show for a second. 
Then BMP2, remember, BMP is just the staircase. BMP1 is Chris. BMP2 adds basement. So let's have it show for a second. So then the guy falling down the stairs is three, four, five, and six. So let's have him fall down a little bit faster. So we'll put him at half a second. So 500, three, then four, then five, then six. So he's good there, but he's just falling down the stairs and it's gonna end up on that last frame where he's on his head. So let's go ahead and add one more frame to make it seem like he's fallen clear off the screen. So we'll just go back to frame three where it's just the staircase and the Chris's basement. So the guy's not there anymore. So let's tag that on the end. So we'll just add a space, paste that in there. It's frame three, but remember we put it in the BMP2 slot. You can name those whatever you want in this file. I just kept the same order so it was a little less confusing. And let's show the Chris's Basement logo for another second before our animation is over. So we're good, we've built our animation. We can save this. You want the file to be called underscore bootscreen.h. I'll show you more on that in a second. And there's really only one tweak that you need to make in your Marlin firmware to get this to work. So let's jump into VS Code. In configuration.h, make sure you're using the correct screen. Remember the one that works, this 128 by 64, is the discount full graphics smart controller, that guy right there. And then all the way pretty close to the top of configuration.h, here's your boot screen options. Here's where you can show a status image or your custom boot screen. This boot screen right here is the Marlin logo. The one we need to enable is show custom boot screen. So just take the comment off of that line right there. Now it's going to try to access your underscore boot screen dot H every time the printer boots. And the only thing we have left to do is to add in our boot screen dot H file. So in our configuration example, in examples in that animation example, we've updated our boot screen dot H. That's the file we just built up. Let's copy that. And then inside your Marlin config, inside your Marlin folder, just paste your boot screen.h right in here. Now you're good to go. You can go ahead and recompile Marlin and upload it to your printer. And every time you boot, you'll have a really awesome animated boot screen. By the way, make sure your syntax is correct. It doesn't like it when you miss commas. I did add one more line. I forgot to end it with a comma right here. And the last one, you don't need a comma. That's only gotten me a half a dozen times over the years. And after a successful compile, when you reboot and the firmware loads, here comes your custom boot screen. And there it is. So there you go. There's all the steps that it takes to build an animated custom boot screen inside Marlin firmware. Now remember, for the firmware contest, you just have to be creative. You don't have to use Marlin. You can do whatever you wish. The only rules, it has to be firmware related somewhat, and it has to be cool. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you want to create your own animated screens, that is it for today. And I'll see you really soon on the next one.